Hello everybody, it's Chris. It's August of 2019 and I'm back on the scene and if you're feeling the vibe, then like, share, and subscribe. I'm here with another video about the Acadians. It just so happens that today is August 15th, National Acadian Day, on the day that I'm recording this. So, I'm going to talk to you about the Acadians, but before we can get to these Acadians, we have to learn about these Acadians. The Akkadian Empire was the first ancient empire of Mesopotamia, centered in the city of Akkad and its surrounding region, which the Bible also called Akkad. They end up going on to say that they, they end up intermingling with the Sumerians, and they end up having heavy influence all across Mesopotamia, and all this region here, that all these cities here that they, they're talking about, during the 3rd millennium BC, there developed a very intimate cultural symbiosis between the Sumerians and the Akkadians, which included widespread bilingualism. But I just find it interesting that they say that Akkadian is Eastern Semitic language, and these Akkadians are in the very far east of North America. Just saying, I'm going to be making some connections like that this whole video, so you just watch it. So it gradually replaced Sumerian as a spoken language somewhere between the 3rd and 2nd millennium BC. The exact dating being a matter of debate. <laughs> you know why it's a matter of debate? Because there is no proof of when these people actually existed. Alright, so we're just going to scroll down here for a bit. We, we're really just more interested in the, the history, right? So what history do they have of it, right? So they're going to lead off with the Bible refers to Akkad in Genesis 10.10, which states that the beginning of Nimrod's kingdom was in the land of Akkad. Nimrod's historical identity is unknown, but some have compared him to the legendary Gilgamesh, founder of Uruk. This is a very interesting spelling of this city here. It's in this same verse, so I'll show you that in a minute. Today's scholars have have documented some 7,000 texts from the Akkadian period, written in both Sumerian and Akkadian. Many later texts from the successor states, Assyria and Babylonia, also deal with the, the Akkadian Empire. The empire was succeeded by Assyria and Babylon, but Assyria and Babylon also deal with a, the Akkadian Empire. So, yeah, and here you go, right? So, understanding the Akkadian Empire continues to be hampered by the fact that its capital, Akkad, has not yet been located, despite numerous attempts. You ain't looking in the right place, that's why. It's over here. You have people called Akkadians, still. <laughs> Precise dating of archaeological sites is hindered by the fact that that there are no clear distinctions between the artifact assemblages thought to stem from the preceding early dynastic period, so the people before them, and those thought to be Akkadian. Likewise, material that is thought to be Akkadian continues to be found into the Ur-3 period. So basically they're saying that there's no clear distinction between the people before them and them and the people after them. So it's all the same people. There's no difference between them. I don't know. Like they, they just throw in this Akkad with two Ks. Who knows? We're just gonna gonna roll with it, right? But they're basically saying that they have no idea where this place is or when they existed in the timeline. I'm gonna show you the King James 1611. So it's one of the very first Bibles that was translated into English. How do they spell Cad? Genesis 10.10. In the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Uruk and Akkad and Kalne in the land of Shinar or Shinar, however you want to pronounce it. I'm not quite certain. So we'll just go take a scroll down here and you can clearly see they, they tried to split it up here but it's A-C-C-A-D. We scroll down here and it says right here. The same thing I just read to you, right? So here's Uruk, right? Is that this Uruk? Just trying to make a, a connection, right? The very first English Bible says that it's spelt with C's. 
But they're saying, oh, the Bible refers to it in Genesis 10.10 as a cod with two Ks. But that's not how it's spelled. It's spelled similar to the these Akkadians. No, I'm not saying that these Akkadians didn't exist with the two Ks. Because the K is older than the C. The C only goes back to the Greeks, the Hellenistic period, when they started, when they turned the hard K noise that it made to also having a s noise. So they needed a letter that did both those noises. So they had to make a new letter up and they made C. So not quite certain when that happened in the timeline, but it, it happened in the Hellenistic period is what they attribute that to. And this we translated from probably a Hellenistic uh, Latin Bible or whatever at the time, the Septuagint. So now we're going to jump over here to this site, right? And the first thing that they tell you on Wikipedia, it's don't get that shit confused with Cadian Empire. Completely different. We don't know where or when or who they are, but they're completely different than these ones. We know that for sure. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna prove that these were the Akkadians that were here in Babylon when they showed up here and they had nothing to do with French people. So we're gonna we're gonna read what they have to say about these guys to get a little context. The Akkadians are the descendants of French colonists who settled in Acadia. So Acadia was known as Acadia before they settled there, right? They didn't settle there and then called it Acadia. They settled in Acadia. During the 17th and 18th century is what they tell us, right? Some of whom are descendants from the indigenous people of the region. I think the Acadians were the indigenous people and they mixed with the, the people that we now call indigenous people who the real indigenous people, the Acadians with a K, were melanated dark-skinned people. The copper-colored races that were here in North America before the colonists came over here and before they gave us this whole story of history. So, anyways, we're going down this. Anyway. So, it's located here in eastern Canada in the Maritimes, right? Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and uh, Prince Edward Island. Also in parts of Quebec and Maine, modern-day Maine. The Kennebec River, I think. Acadia was a distinctly separated colony from New France. It was geographically and administratively separate from the French colony of Canada, modern-day Quebec. As a result, the Acadians and Quebecois developed two distinct histories and cultures. The settlers whose descendants became Acadians came from many areas in France. Who were the first people that settled here? If you look back to my breaking down Steely Dan's The Royal Scam video, I show you who the first French people to come here might have been. But that's for that video. You have to go check that one out. During the French Indian War, the North American theater of the Seven Year War which is a pretty interesting war. I can show you, show you that in a minute. The British suspected the Acadians of teaming up with France, so they kicked them out during uh, known, what's known as the Great Expulsion, right? The Grand Derangement. So this happened in 1755 to 1764. I actually think it took a little bit longer to get them all the people out, but uh, approximately one-third perished in disease and drowning. So they say a whole bunch of people died. Most Acadians were deported in various American colonies where many were forced into servitude and marginal lifestyles. Some Acadians were deported to England, to the Caribbean, and some were deported to France. They're telling you they took them to the Caribbean because we know who's in the Caribbean. We know who the West Indians are, right? The West Indian people are? Well, that's where they came from. They sent them down there. That's how they populated the islands, I guess, maybe. I'm just trying to put stuff together. After being expelled to France, many Acadians eventually went down and they ended up becoming the Cajuns, right? They ended up becoming the Cajun people, right? Who, if you look back on history, they're the first for dark skin. Before the U.S. Re Revolutionary War, the Crown settled New England planters in former Acadia and former Acadian communities and farmlands as well as loyalists after the war, including nearly 3,000 black loyalists who were freed slaves. The British policy was to assimilate Acadians with the local population where they resettled. Pre-Manakta style, right? And that is real sh Why would they have the term? 
So basically, yeah, they became the Cajuns and yeah, all that. So we're just over here now on the Acadia website, not the Acadian website. So the etymology, Explorer Giovanni del Brasano is credited for originating the distinction Acadia, oh, sorry, on his 16th century map, where he applied an ancient Greek name Arcadia to the entire Atlantic coast north of Virginia. Arcadia is derived from the Arcadia district in Greece, which had the extended meaning of refuge or idyllic place Henry V of France chartered a colony south of the St. Lawrence between the 40th and 46th parallel in 1603. And he recognized it as Le Cadi. Samuel de Champlain fixed its present orthography with the R omitted. And cartographer William Francis Gangong has shown its gradual progress northeastward to its resting place in the United Provinces of Canada. So that's all they tell you. It only comes from this one guy who started calling it Arcadia and then Sam de Champlain took you. That's all that's here, right? So in my, my first video about Acadians, the breaking down of Steely Dan's The Royal Scam, I forgot to do the etymology of Acadia. I was actually watching a video by this awesome YouTuber, UBTV, formerly UB News. He put out Tower of Babylon Found in America video and gave me a little bit more insight into this place and into making this video. Now, he used to be UB News. After he released the full video of this, no word of a lie, a few days, a week later, they took him down. So now he's up on UBTV, putting out all of his videos again. Like most people on YouTube, I don't agree with everything he says. But I do agree with a lot of the stuff that he says. His videos are really good. And yeah, you should check that out. This guy basically found the Tower of Babel. And I'm going to show you it because there's, they're censoring him. So it has to be some form of truth, right? As soon as he put this video out, they took him down. So I'm going to put it out and we're going to just see what happens, I guess. So in his video, he read out this whole thing. But he read out the whole thing. This isn't the whole thing. So this guy put out his video on his other channel, the one that he got deleted on. He put it out. Uh, he put it out sometime late July, I believe. It says this page was last edited July twenty seventh. 2019 right that was after his video so over here on possibly one of my favorite websites we have the online etymology dictionary it basically tells you where everything came from where the etymology of all the words where they all came from right so it says the acadian native or inhabitant of the french colony of acadia in what is now canadian maritimes 1705 from acadia latinized from acadie french name of nova scotia probably from Arcadia, the name given to the region by Varenzo in the 1520s. From Greek Arcadia, then emblematic in pastoral poetry of a place of rural peace, see Arcadian. The name may have been suggested to Europeans by the native Mi'kmaq, Algonquin word, Acadie, meaning fertile land. The Acadians, expelled by the English in 1755, settled in numbers in Louisiana and were known as Acadians by 1803. See Cajun, which is a corruption of Acadian, all right? They, they're basically telling you here that the Europeans got the idea to name this place from the native Mi'kmaq people that were here before them who already called this place Akadi, meaning fertile land. So yeah, so indigenous people before the Europeans got here already had the name Akadi for this place. It's not from any European. It was the name of this place before that. So if we jump over here, this is from the CBC, which is our, you know, national broadcasting company. And they tell us about the Acadians, right? So they give us a timeline on what's happening here, all, this, all the moving and shake going on with the Acadians, right? It goes on and tells us all about the expulsion, right? The decision made to ex begin expulsion, whatever, right? So they start kicking people out. We're going to scroll down here to 1764. The British authorities in 1764 allowed Acadians to return in small isolated groups. So if you're going to expel somebody, got rid of them all in the 1763, we'll say, why would you start letting them back in? Why expel them just to let them back in? What they did was they expelled the 
Acadians with a K, the older ones, the ones that were here before, the, the melanated indigenous people that were jiving with the Most High, they expelled them out of this region and took them to Newfoundland, right? There's a lot of history of the slave trade going through Newfoundland. They tell you that the slaves came from Africa to Newfoundland to North America, but in actuality, they actually went from Acadia to Newfoundland to France and the West African coast, and they also took them to the West Indies. My wife is West Indian, and she is a beautiful melanated complexion, and it's and that's the people that they got rid of, and then they let the Acadians with a C in, the people who assumed these people's identity. They took it over and just kind of moved in and said, oh yeah, we're Acadians, yeah, we, we mixed with the indigenous people, and all of them are whiter than me. I don't, I don't know much about people going through the Falkland Islands, I, I'm not quite certain about that. It's funny that today is August 15th, right, because it is National Acadian Day, right? So what is National Acadian Day. They're Acadian, they're not English, right? They wouldn't call it National Acadia Day. What did they call it? So we'll have to scroll down here. They call it Our Lady of Assumption Day, which is the National Acadian Day. Our Lady of Assumption is who they pray to and who they believe in, I guess. I just find it funny that the new Acadians, with a C, their person that they pray to is the Lady of Assumption. So, what's Assumption? The definition right now of Assumption. A thing that is accepted as true or as certain to happen without proof. Does that not say a mouthful? I'm telling you, they assumed the Acadians with a K, their uh, area. And then they took the Acadians with a K and put them in the Middle East, where it's not very fertile, and you couldn't have everybody in the world together to build the Tower of Babel. You couldn't have them in there. You would need more resources. They prayed to Our Lady of Assumption. Notre Dame de Assumption is what they call it. English translation is Our Lady of Assumption. And that's their national holiday. <laughs> You can't write this. This is perfect. I'm just putting it together. And we're over here on BibleHub.com. And all I did was just pump in a cod to tell me what the definition is, right? So it comes up, the Hitchcock, whatever definition. A vessel, pitcher, spark. Okay, right? Smith's Bible definition. In one city, the land of Shinar, Genesis 10.10, 10, its position is quite uncertain. So they still don't know where it is, right? So I'm not going to read all of them, but basically they just kind of explain the same thing over and over again, right? Until you get down here to the Eaton's Bible definition. Here we go. The highland or mountains, a city in the land of Shinar, it has been identified with the mounds of Kakrakov, some 50 miles north of Babylon, but it is doubtful. It was one of the cities of Nimrod's kingdom, Genesis 10.10. It stood close to the Euphrates opposite of Sippara. And it tells you that this is that's the actual word that you see instead of that word, that one, right? It is also the name of the country of which this city was the capital of. It's It was the country, it was a region of the area, right? It wasn't just a city, it was a region. Namely, northern or upper Babylonia. The Akkadians who came from the mountains of the east, where the ark rested, attained to a high degree of civilization. In Babylonian inscription, they are called the blackheads or the black faces. Boom! In context to the white races of Shemitic descent. So see, then they try to throw you off with the, the end there, right? Oh well, yeah, the white races of Semitic descent, right? But we all know that's not true. That is from Shem. They're melanated people. You can literally, you can go over to the Wikipedia page of Semitic languages, and it says, the Semitic languages previously also named syro 
Arabian languages are a branch of Afro-Asiatic language family. How are the Semitic people Afro-Asiatic, but they're the white race? You see what's going on here? Everybody is not who they say they are. We need to figure this all out. The Akkadians, they invented the, uh, they invented the form of writing in pictorial hieroglyphs and also the cuneiform system in which they wrote many books partly on papyrus and partly on clay so they were crazily smart they invented all this stuff the semitic babylonians the white race <laughs> okay whatever or as some scholars think the first kushites what come on now and afterwards as a second immigration the semites invaded and conquered this country and the Akkadian language ceased to be spoken. Although, for the sake of its literary treasures, it continued to be studied by the educated class of Babylonia. So, in this guy's video, he has a map that he had laid out, which thinks pretty good. He has the Euphrates River, river here. This is Egypt, Assyria, Babylon's up in this area where uh, Akkad and Akkadia is. And the Israel is over here in Judah, Utah area. Lebanon up in the California where they got the big cedars and all that. Moab is still where Moab is today. Red Sea, the Egyptian Sea down here, right? Like I said, just uh, check them out. It's pretty good but he basically just talks about Babylon being up in here and that how he's found the Tower of Babel and that you can clearly see it from space and I think it's it could quite possibly be we're on to the the Bible verse here it's picking up a good idea of where Cod is Babel will obviously be near the Tower of Babel and that would be in the north and in, I will show it to you somewhere near the end of the video but until then where the rest of the places are all right so we're gonna start with Uruk right so jump over here back over to the Bible hub where we pump in the name of Uruk right so we come over here and it's a proper name and it's Uruk Kave. and then if you look at the Phoenician spelling of it it would be Arkavahi Arkavahi an inhabitant of Uruk so it's talking about an inhabitant so you could probably say that's called Arak or Arak we have, uh, so we have it down here, and it says it's Aramaic, partially from Arak. So it's not even Hebrew, right? So there's your first problem, right? It's not really, really old. It's just kind of old. It's not from the people who are actually speaking Hebrew. But it says, Patriol from Uruk, and Akavite, collectively, or native of Uruk. Akavite, see Uruk. So we're going to go to this. It says it's Erek, Erek, a city in Babylon, of foreign origin, Uruk, from Arak. Lengthen uh, a place in Babylon. Uruk, see Arak. Long root Arak. So this has it Arak, but Arak ends up being to be long. It's a, it's a verb, right? So now you're, you're looking at a verb. Defer, tarry long, a primitive root, to be causative, make, all that all that stuff, right? But you don't really get a place, right? So we're looking for a place. This would be the last er, erect, right? It'd be place. So since they can't really figure out where it's coming from, and this website here even calls it Uruk with a U R U K. We're talking, everybody's kind of misspelling it right here, right? This is just pure speculation on, on my part of this whole thing, right? I'm just, just throwing this out here, seeing what people think. In Quebec, they call people from Quebec, Quebecois, right? Instead of, you know, EN, like Canadian, being from Canada, they say Qua. So I'm thinking if you have somebody from Uruk and they are closer to Quebec and Ontario and maybe a little south in New York area or whatever, that region, we have the Iroquois people and they are made up of the five nation right so they are a, a grouping of people right now i'm just throwing this out there just maybe everybody's just misspelling their name so this is the the iroquois they are the indigenous people they're made up of five five nations and their little map here that they show right they're not quite on the coast they're not quite on the top here they're not where the tower of babel is but they're just inside right so maybe this is Uruk, right maybe this is Uruk part of babylon right in that map from ubtv this was all babylon right so maybe that's one part and acadia and and, go, and then Babylon's way up in here, and the Egypt was down here and stuff, right? Just throwing that out there, right? That 
that we have Urqua of Uruk. Maybe if, if we go and we look up Akkad in here from an unused root, probably meaning to strengthen a fortress, Akkad, a place in Babylon, Akkad. They never say that it's with two Ks even in here, but they do say it is so we Akkad. <laughs> That's awesome. So they just say that it's just a city in Babylon, right? Or, or a region or a fortress or whatever. They can't really make up their minds of what it is, but they do know that it's Vyakad. All right, so then we're going to jump over because we're breaking down all these ones, right? So so we did Uruk, we did Akkad, now we're doing Kalna. Where, where's Kalna at? Kalna is with a K as well, right? So all the old old names, old Ka words are with K because that's what the Melanated people used. It wasn't until the Hellenistic people came through which are the Greeks, and used all these other letters, right? We're place in Babylon, right? Kalna, right? So we're going to head down here. So it says Kalna, Kalno, so it's, or Kalne, pronounced Kalne. <laughs> also, Kalno, for a form of derivation. Kalne, or Kalno, place in the Assyrian Empire. Kalne, Kalno. Compare, Kane, see Hebrew Kane. Kane, a proper place in Babylon. So we're going to drop down here, and it's pronounced Kane, right? Kane with a C. Woo! Right? That's getting close, right? For for Kalna, Kalne, a place in Syria. Kalne, or C, Kalna. So they're just throwing you back and forth. So it's Kalne or Kalna, right? Now, I live in a country called Kane Da. Right? That's some shit. So we have Kane, which could be Canada. We have Uruk, which could be Urukwa. We have Akkad, which is still Akkad. <laughs> and then we have Babel. Before we get into where Babel is, I am going to continue explaining a little bit more about Uruk. I believe that all these places, Babel, Uruk, Akkadia, and Kalne, are all regions in the land of Shinar. Or Shinar. So I believe that this Uruk is the same as this Uruk. It, that was founded by Nimrod slash Gilgamesh. And I believe that the city that their capital was Ur. So we're going to talk a little bit about Ur of the Chaldees. Ur Kishtim, commonly translated to Ur of the Chaldees, is a city mentioned in the Hebrew Bible as the birthplace of the Israelite and Islamite patriarch Abraham. So this is where Abraham was born. Basically the guy who started these two major religions. So they're going to tell you that this guy found it in this place. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Or this one. That's just, I'm just going to mash them up. In southern Iraq. So we're going to, 1927, this guy excavated this site, identified it as a Sumerian archaeological site where the Chaldeans were to settle around the 9th century BCE. Recent archaeology work has continued to focus on the location in that place again, <laughs> where the ancient ziggurat of Ur is located. But then, they tell you in the very next paragraph, other sites traditionally thought to be Abraham's birthplace are in the vicinity of the Assyrian city of Edessa. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, but it's modern-day southeastern Turkey. Some Jewish authorities put it in this place, or that place, or they place ur Kashtim in various upper Mesopotamian areas, uh, or southeastern Anatolian sites such as these places here, right? So basically they're saying that they don't know where this place is, yet again, right? Another one that they don't know where this place is. So, if all these smart people are going to sit here and speculate about where this place is, this smartass is going to speculate about where this place is. So, we're going to jump back into what I was saying before about how all these places are region. Uh, I believe that the city of Ur was where the Uriqua nation was. And this would be the region that they that they held. So you would have uh, Uruqua nation here, or Uruk, and then you would have the coastline here would be Acadia, and then you would have Babel would be up in the north part, and then you would have Kalne or Kane, all up in here, right, where we find Kane. <laughs> well, I mean it's all Canada now, but 
whatever, right? So I believe that this was Uruk, and now it's just the Iroquois nation. So now we're going to jump over here to the, the Bible Hub explanation of what's what Ur is. So they really pronounce it Ur, a city in South Babylon. So we're going down to here to the strongest exhaustive concordance, right? Ur, the same as Ur, a place in Chaldea, also an Israelite, see Hebrew Ur, right? So we're going to jump over here. So it's kind of crazy that an Ur is an Israelite. Boom. So we're going to go to this one because it's telling us that we should head over there and check this one out. So what's this one? Now this one is or, or, right? A flame. So we're going to scroll down here. It says flame, light, from Ur, flame. Hence, in the plural, the east, as being the region of light. Fire, light, also see Urahim. We're going to jump into that one. But they're telling you it's from, that's in the east, and it's a light from the east. So now we're going to jump into that, the next one here. Urim. Part of the high priest's breastplate. We're going to scroll down on here. Urim. So it's plural of Ur. Lights, Urim. The ocular brilliance of the figures in the high priest's breastplate. Urim. See Ur. Right? So we're just, they're just going to kick us back to the other one. So let's go to Ur now. So it's a verb. Or is how you pronounce it. To be or become light. Pretty interesting. Right? So we're going to scroll down here. The exhaustive concordance. Break, give, show light, and set on fire. Shine. A primitive root. So this is the, the primitive root word of this whole thing. To be. Causative. Make luminous. Literally or metaphorically. Break of day. Glorious. Kindle. Be light and and light and <laughs> give light. Show light. You know, set on fire and shine. Basically, it's to illuminate both as a spiritual enlightenment and as literal, like maybe even a power source or a fire or something. We know that it's light from the east. So the very far east of this map here is pretty close to Quebec City is where they would be coming from. So we found out that the city of Ur could be in the Iroquois nation, right? It's not located somewhere in Iraq in the desert. It's actually somewhere in the lush, fertile lands of Quebec. Abraham was the, the patriarch to start it all. So we're going to, so in the UBTV slash UB News video about the Tower of Babel, he went on to explain that we have here the Plains of Abraham. Pretty interesting little spot. So they're going to give you the BS story about why they call this the Plains of Abraham. It is a historic area within the battlefield's park in Quebec City, Quebec, Canada. The land is the site of the Battle of the Plains of Abraham, which took place on September 13th, 1759. But hundreds of acres of field became used for grazing, housing, and minor industrial structures. Anyways, we want to know more a little bit more about the history. Anyways, So we're going to go down here the history of the place, right? So it was on this September 13th in 1759. The area was the scene of the Battle of the Plains of Abraham, the part of the French Indian War, which was itself part of the Seven Years' War. On that date, British soldiers under the command of General Wolfe climbed the steep cliff under the city in darkness, despising and defeating the French, though a single deadly volley of a musket fire caused the battle to be over within 30 minutes. What? Okay, so they said one shot, I guess, rung out. A single deadly volley. Somebody died. I guess it was uh, Commander Marquis de Montcalm died from the wound. So a single musket shot, and the battle was over in 30 minutes. Okay, <laughs> that's what they're telling you happened here. But this was right before the expulsion of the Acadians. 
and the French Indian War, I told you if you watch the breakdown of Steely Dan's The Royal Scam, the video that I made earlier, I tell you at the end of the video that the French Indian War is when they got basically rid of all the melanated indigenous people and brought in the people that we see today as natives and Acadian. And I showed you in that same video that the Seven Year War, that they in their own words tell you that it's basically white people getting rid of melanated people in uh, France and Hungary and a couple other, basically all of Europe. It was World War One before World War One. You guys can check that out or do your own research into it, but it basically they make it seem like it was more of a race war. With that being all said and done, and that this battle was only over in 30 minutes and it happened in 1759, we're going to figure out why they call the Plains of Abraham the Plains of Abraham. The Plains of Abraham are likely named after Abraham Martin, a fisherman and river pilot called the Scot. Martin moved to Quebec City in 1635 with his wife, Margaret Langlois, and received 32 acres of land divided between the lower town and, and promontory from the Company of New France. This guy was given this land. Just, here you go, bud. Abraham's name appears in the toponymy of Quebec City at the time of the French regime. The deeds of the 17th and 18th century refer to the coast of Abraham and a 1734 plan even precisely lo locating an Abraham street. Later, the journals of Cavalier Chevalier de Levi and the Marquis de Montcalm referred to the heights of Abraham as did the diaries of British soldiers who also employed the phrase Plains of Abraham. So, they're saying that this is named after after Abraham. So this guy lived from 1589 to 1664. He moved to Quebec City in 1635. So he literally died 29 years later and they still named everything after him. The maps and deeds that all appear to show his name all appear in the 17th century, not during his time. They didn't say anything about the deed of the new, of the company of New France giving him land. They just show, said that deeds referred to it as the Abraham Coast, right? So let's see who, who Abraham Martin is. There's nothing here. <laughs> He's a fisherman, though. All right, so we're back here. Abraham Martin, known as the Scotsman, born in France in the 1589, died in Quebec 1684. Not quite certain why they would call him the Scotsman, but whatever. Sorry, his name is attached to the Plains of Abraham, where the famous battle took place. He arrived in New France around 1620. Well, was a fisherman. St. Lawrence, he received 12 acres of land. So, and it says down here, so, after the death of Abraham, the lands are sold to the Ur Ursulines. They were sold to that people. And, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna basically... So, again, they're just gonna tell you that basically his name was just attached, the, the coast of Abraham was just attached to this area, and it has nothing to do with with an actual like deed or whatever that was written in Abraham's name. It's all about deeds that refer to the place, that area being called the Abraham Coast. So the name predates anything that they, any proof that they say that they have of this place actually being referred to this guy, this gentleman, this Scotsman who's not from Scotland. Yeah, so now we're here at on Google Maps looking at what else? Plains of Abraham, right? So we're gonna zoom out a little bit. We're told that Abraham, when he was in Ur, in the Bible, he built a great temple. And now what do we have in the Plains of Abraham? We have an amazing star fort, right? Is this star fort the temple that Abraham built or what they call a temple that Abraham built in Ur, in the city of Ur? This is in Quebec City. So I'm, I'm wondering if this whole area was the land of Abraham and he built his amazing, he built a great temple to do what he needed to do to be the light in the east, to illuminate people. Maybe this was a, a source of energy like a lot of people have been wondering and maybe it lit up the place, you know, maybe he had power source going on here. Yeah, maybe he was just teaching everybody. But if you look at it, it's, it's in the area of the Iroquois nation. So I'm thinking that it's part of Uruk. It's Ur and Uruk. 
that's just my speculation. You all can write in the comments of what you think, but I'm saying that this is the temple of Abraham. So in the UB News, he points out that this is, he basically makes light that this is basically called Abraham because of Abraham from the Bible. My little thing is I'm adding on that this is Abraham's temple that he built in Ur because that's amazing. Look at that star fort. And it's only half of it. The other half's gone. Who knows what could have been out here. All right, so now without fur further ado, we're, we're going to get into Babel and the Tower of Babel. Here we go. So now we're here at the Bible Hub and we're learning about Babel. It's Bob Bell is what how they pronounce it. And they're going to try and tell you that it's a Mediterranean empire. Babel. Babylon. From Balal. Confusion. Babel. I.E. Babylon including Babylonia and the Babylonian Empire. Babel. Babylon. You gotta love when you try and get a definition of a word and they just use a different version of the word over and over again to try to explain it. <laughs> right? Well, I guess we're going into this. Balal. So it's Balal to mingle, to mix, confuse, confound. Jump down here to strongest concordance. Anoint, confound, fade, mingle, mix, self, give, provender, temper. This is a primitive word, right? To overflow, specifically with oil. By implication, to mix, also denominatively from pliable, plybill. To fodder, anoint, confound, fade, mingle, Mix self, give provander temp right? So it just keeps saying all that shit over and over again. Fodder is feed. So I guess maybe they're mixing food, they're mixing oils. Not sure exactly what to make of that, but it's just everybody was mixing and it's it's denominatively from food. With that being said, it doesn't really give us much of a location. So that's Babel. It's basically to confuse. So now we're here and we're looking up tower, right? So a tower. Ba con tower from bakan an asair or metals tower see bakan so we're gonna go and jump and see bakan bakan right like the the great khan nation like the uh, tartarians almost all the tartarian kings were all khans right a little interesting little thing there for all you tartarian folks to examine try it's a primitive word examine prove tempt or try trial a primitive root to test especially metals, generally or figuratively, to investigate, examine, prove, tempt, try, or trial, right? So that's tower. It doesn't say anything. It, it says that it's made out of metals or to test metals, but it doesn't necessarily say that it's like a superstructure, but eh, who knows? We're, we're told that it was a big structure that went up to the sky. So with that being said, a huge structure that reaches to the sky should have a huge footprint. If you were to look for a big footprint of what would be a tower, and as we're scouring around, we instantly come to the site of this bad boy right here. Now I had this marked in. So now UB News slash UB TV, he put forth this idea of this being the Tower of Babel. Me and the wife found this years ago and planning a trip ever since. <laughs> we just never got around to it. And I really, really wish that I did a little bit more research into it because I would have probably come to the same conclusion too. Look at the size of this bad boy, right? So we're looking at the René Levasseur Island in the Lewis Babel Ecological Reserve. So let's go and check this place out. So now we're over here at the Wikipedia page for the Tower of Babel, just to get a little bit about it. So they always give you these pictures that just a big giant circle. This tower, that, this huge giant tower that went up, right? The modern day scholars try to put it into like the ziggurat of Ur, like that doesn't look anything like it, or you know, any of these places that don't show any signs of looking anything like what they depict it as, right? Basically, if you didn't know, the Tower of Babel's from the Bible, and it's from Genesis 11 that basically explains that the world was all working together as one language and after the flood and in the land of uh, Shinar they were all working together they decided that they wanted to challenge the most high so they decided to build a tower to the heavens and try to challenge him and the most high seeing that we're going to be capable of doing this and had to destroy the tower and confuse everybody's languages so that we couldn't get together and do that again. We're going to scroll down here to 
Let's see, we'll start, we'll start off with the etymology. So the phrase Tower of Babel does not appear in the Bible. Huh, there you go. It is always the city and the tower, or just the city. The original derivation of the name Babel, also the Hebrew name for Babylon, is uncertain. The native Akkadian name of the city was Babylim, meaning gate of God. However, that form and interpretation itself now usually thought to be the result of an Akkadian folk etymology applied to an early form of the name Babila of unknown meaning and probably non-Semitic origin. According to the Bible, the city received the name Babel from the Hebrew verb Balel, meaning to jumble or to confuse. All right. It's, well, it's from Akkadian, so we know it's from in this area. All right. So it says the height here wasn't mentioned in the actual Bible. So we have to go into the Book of Jubilees. And the Book of Jubilees says the height as being 5,433 cubits and two palms, or 2,484 meters, 8,150 feet, three times the height of the whatever that place is. That's the tower in Dubai, three times the height, or roughly 1.6 miles high. So basically, we're looking at about, you know, 8,000 feet, right? It was the Tower of Babel. And it wasn't even all the way to the top. The Most High destroyed it before then, right? And so for the destruction, the account Genesis makes no mention, again, of any destruction of the tower. The people whose language are confounded were simply scattered from, from there over the face of the earth and stopped building their city. However, in other sources, such as the Book of Jubilee, Cornelius Alexander... Abedenus, Josephus, and the Silbaline Oracles, God overturned the tower with great winds, and the Midrash, it said that the top of the tower was burnt, and the bottom of, and the bottom was swallowed, and the middle was left standing to erode over time. So the top was burnt, so the, the Most High sent down a great fire, and the bottom was swallowed. Swallowed by what? By the earth, of course, right? Mud flood, anybody? That's what we're talking about here, right? This, the earth is being, the earth is swallowing up a whole third of the bottom of it, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to now jump over here. Rene Levasseur Island is a large island in the center of Lake Manicouagan in Quebec, Canada. The highest the highest peak is Mount Babel at 952 meters or 3,123 feet, which is contained in the Lewis Babel Ecological Reserve with a total area of 2,020 kilometers and a diameter of 72 kilometers. The island is larger in area than Annular Lake in which it is situated. Okay. Rene Lav Lavasseur Island is the world's second largest island in a lake. The largest is Manitoulin Island in Lake Huron. The geological structure, they say, was formed by an impact of a meteor 214 million bajillion quadrillion years ago. No one will ever know exactly about how long. <laughs> If that's even true or not, most definitely isn't true. The meteorite is believed to have been about five kilometers in diameter. And, <laughs> but how high is the pile of bullshit you're feeding us? <laughs> So we, come, so we come down here and it says, It became an artificial island when the Manicouagan Reservoir was flooded in 1970. So it wasn't even an island that long ago, right? It was only in 1970 that they decided to drown it all out. Maybe because they figured people were going to start realizing with satellite imagery that the Tower of Babel is right there, <laughs> right in Quebec. <laughs> Merging two crescent-shaped lakes... Mushalagain Lake on the western side and the Manitouagan Lake on the eastern side. It is the largest artificial island in the world. What? 
they basically flooded the Tower of Babel so that we couldn't see what's really out there. So Hydro-Quebec made this lake for this multi-arc dam. Dam, dam, flooded everything, all right? <laughs> With that in mind, we can just Google search cities flooded by dams and we will find a whole crap load of cities that are flooded out by dam. And it's, it's, they're hiding stuff, hiding cities and spots that we could find out a lot of our history from. Look at these, these towers that are just out in the middle of these beautiful spots that are out in the middle of lakes and reservoirs for dams. They basically just drowned out all these spots. There's a whole bunch of them in the U.S. alone. There's spots where they just said, you all got to get out, can't be here. And they flooded the place like the next day or next week or whatever it is. That's what they do. That's what they did here is they flooded it out because they're hiding all the history that was here. Like, look at these places. Like, look at how amazing these places are, right? And they're all just flooded out by dams for quote unquote power. And so that's what I'm saying happened here, happened in this area. So we're going to go in. So this, this measurement that they have here is, you know, 8,000 feet, right? And this reservoir is 3,000 feet, sorry, Mount Babel in the reservoir now is 3,000 feet. And they said what's left to erode away. Oh yeah. Also in the UB TV, UB News video, he puts forward that the, the circumference of the Tower of Babel was a, supposedly a three-day walk. And this is just so happens to be uh just happens to be if you were to stretch it out to like maybe a 12 hour a day walk that you could walk this whole structure you could walk all the way around this whole structure that is more a little bit more evidence i guess yeah so just to i guess just to recap that this could possibly be the tower of babel in quebec canada we have uruk being in Quebec City, where the Plains of Abraham, and Abraham was born and uh, started two major religions in Uruk. And then we have Akkad, which is pro still pretty much Acadia now. Just uh, we, They just kind of moved a little bit more to the east. I believe it went more down into the, the Americas, than what they're telling us. We have Babel, which is obviously up near where the Babel is. And then we have Kenne, which is where, you know, the start of Canada. Upper and lower Canada were, was right here, right? And that's pretty much the northern part of the Iroquois nation. So maybe the Kalne or Kane was up here in this area. If the smart people are going to speculate on where these places is, are, then I'm going to speculate on where these places are. And I think there's more more signs pointing that they're here than, they're, than it is over there. I hope you tell me what you think in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Just before I go, um, I'd like to say this video is taking a little bit longer because uh, I recently lost my father and I'm dedicating this video to, to him. I thank him for everything that he made me. I thank you and I love you all. Have a good one.